Hello everyone. I'm going to show you the build of my automated factory at Starlight Drive-In on Fallout 4. This was done on Xbox One with mods. When the mod list loads, pause the video if you'd like to take a more in-depth look at what mods were used. Um, this extensively used advanced settlement power and manufacturing extended, as well as settlement limits slashed. Exterior. I'm going to do a 360 degree pan. Taking a walk all the way around the exterior of the building, you can see four loading dock doors, a stair set that goes to the roof from the exterior. See an input loading door on the back side here. Another dock door with ramp access. And the external elevator to the third floor. Back to the front of the building, we go in through the front door. There's a guard desk. So as you come into the factory, you see that I have eight presses set up. Each of these presses are numbered and can be programmed to manufacture whatever it is you'd like to manufacture. Right now I have them set up to manufacture power cores. Looking around this way, you can see a control desk up top. Down to our right were input machines. And these are the conveyor belts. You'll also note the gate reset button, I'll cover that later. So as we move down to turn on the master power switch, currently the only thing powered is lights. When you power the switch up, more lights come on, all the doors are wired to open as well. Now the entire factory has power passing through it. The power comes from this power room where there are three fusion generators. These are object extractors. They have the components placed into them that will create a fusion core. They have different components in them. They all do have nuclear material as the cores require a lot of nuclear material and that one only has nuclear material in it. So it will it will extract nuclear material and then circuitry and then nuclear material and then circuitry in whatever order of, of the items that you have in there. Once again there's the gate reset. You can see the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And then here is eight. So each one of those is an independent manufacturing press. These two are auxiliary presses that are not fed by the belt system, so these would be manual load. That hopper collects items off of the top level presses and then drops them onto the same exit conveyor. So those are the top conveyors. They all run down to the feed hopper. And then when that hopper empties out, it empties onto this lower conveyor. And everything runs down the lower conveyor down into this conveyor storage, which currently has fusion cores in it. So now we can go over and turn the production switch on. 
more lights come on, and the factory starts operating. So the object extractors are extracting copper circuitry, nuclear material. <clears throat> I believe that's it. And plastic. It looks like there's also plastic in there. So as objects come down the main feet belt right here, you'll notice we bypass all of the feeds on that side. Objects continue around this conveyor to the far side to where they feed the furthest machine from the object extractors. So there's a laser curtain right there, there's a counter right to its left. Now the counters are not completely accurate as multiple items pass through and it doesn't count them as multiple items but it does work for the most part. So what happens here is we're set to a counter of five. And so after the laser curtain counts five numbers, and like I said, it's obviously passing more than five items through, but it's still a way to, to gate it. So when it passes through and counts to five, it closes the gate that is one machine further up the line. So it no longer feeds those lower machines. So as we get to five on this Machine number seven, it'll close the gate on the back machine and then start feeding it. It'll be a little more clear on this side as there are more gates to see. So once again, we're counting, we're at four. And if you watch down further to the right on the conveyor, now we've counted five. When we get to that point there, it closes the next gate. So we're at counter number one, counter number two, counter number three, counter four, watch to your right, counter five, then the counter resets and it closes the next gate. So you're going to see the same thing on this gate and the next gate after that. So it tends to close the gates early sometimes and a little fast, but what you'll see with this final gate, so this is machine number one, when it finishes feeding five through this counter, it opens all the gates. So if you watch down the conveyor belt to your left, all the gates open all the way around the feed line. And so it, these materials right here to our right that we're following will follow all the way around the input line to that very first machine where we started and then it repeats the process. And it will do that an infinite amount of times as long as the production switch is running. It feeds, the counter counts to the number you have it set to, works all the way through the machines, and then resets them. So those materials we were following will work their way all the way around to here. As you can see on the output side, we do have a fusion core that's been manufactured from one of the machines. It's coming down, it passes through a laser curtain here. I'll show you what that is hooked up to later. And then it's passing into the storage that we saw earlier. So it takes a while to queue everything up and the fusion cores do take or the fusion cores do take a lot of materials manufacturer so you really have to leave the factory running for a while in order for it to build up enough of a queue in the machines in the power armor or in the forges rather to to start manufacturing the cores once it's been running for a while the cores come out a little more uh, a little more steadily and you see that a little, a little further on in the video There's a conveyor storage, and so I think we had 109 in there at the beginning of the video, and so there's 119 in there now, so it is manufacturing. So, so this, gate reset switch, this gate reset switch just resets the gates in the same way that the counter does after it gets to the number one machine. So if you hit that, for whatever reason you wanted to reset the feed line, you can hit that, and it just opens all the gates again and starts the cycle over. There's another core coming down the output line. 
You can see another following it. Internal elevator and take it up to floor two, which is the control deck. Let's see some decorative computers. This counter right here is a total life cycle counter, and so that curtain I showed you that's on the output line that you can see right there, that laser curtain, that is hooked up to that counter. And so since I've reset the counter last, we've run 350 cores through the factory. You can see, just getting a closer look here, you can see some fusion cores coming off the upper line. And so those will feed over to that hopper. And then they'll drop out of the hopper onto the lower line. And there you can see a small group of fusion cores coming down. And so those will pass through the laser curtain and you'll be able to see how the counter works. And you can see that, you know, it's, it's somewhat cyclical as it feeds the machines, but you can see we're producing more there. So that as, as they're passing through the laser curtain, this total light counter just continues to clock up. I think the counters may act strange because I have them set to five cycle counter right now. But it, it, it's just a limitation of how it is, I guess. And now, that's just the input machines again, the object extractors. We can take this up to the third floor, which is set up for a settler bunk area, sort of like an employee, employee dormitory guard desk here with the door to the outside to that external stairway. That bay door right there leads to the external elevator. So here we have a vacuum hopper that would pull items from workbenches, and then we have a recycler. And so the recycler is powered by its own switch. Um, once again this vacuum hopper is hooked up to your settlement workbenches. There's just a pile of random junk on the floor. And so what you can do with this recycler is put junk into the recycler and then it pulls out raw materials. And so you can then take those raw materials and use them in your object extractor to form them into new material, to new items that you wanted to produce. So I'll just unload a bunch of junk into the recycler. Recycler just runs around on sort of a, an aesthetic belt here to just give you a chance to see what's coming out of it. And then it runs into a workshop storage conveyor and so that will put it back into the workshop as raw material. So if you turn the recycler on, it starts running and you'll notice that we put junk in and now raw materials are coming out such as copper and I believe that was maybe acid coming out of the front of that. Uh, it runs a lot of copper right here. It just so happened whatever I put in, I had a high quantity of copper, and so it runs down the list, you know, in kind of a cyclical fashion. And but not a cyclical fashion, but it runs down the list and, and will break up things. And I may have also put raw copper in there. If you put raw materials in there, it just spits them back out as the same raw material as they were. But these items will all continue around and then end up going back into the workshop storage. So then also what I've done is linked my settlements workshops together through a good network. And so I can come here, put junk into the workbench here, and then turn it into raw materials and have that go back into the workbench, which can then be accessed from any of the settlements. There's lots of copper there. I think I may have accidentally put copper in I did it looks like I put copper in 
So let's pull the copper out, see if we can get it to produce something else. There's some, so there's some nuclear material that came out of, out of the map. Hopefully junk object again, that may have been nuclear material that I put in there as a raw material inadvertently. But it does convert objects into raw material. And once again, those items just run into the workshop storage. This is just a bay door that leads to nowhere. So we go up the external stairway. Um, the rooftop is just open and flat. There's a heavy turret on each corner. So that's the automated factory. Um, our counter is at 425. Like I said, I think the counter may be acting a little strange because of the way, the way I have the other counters set. They're all controlled by the same, the same count factor. Hope you enjoyed.